Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are Leviticus 4 and 5, which is essentially about the sin and guilt offerings. Now, you might be saying, why all the fuss about sin and guilt? Well, if you had to ask William Shakespeare, he would tell you that guilt is a real thing. It's not just a concept. Remember in uh, Lady Macbeth, where she was uh, successful in her uh, killing, her murder of King Duncan. She thought she got away with it. And then her guilt got the better of her and her conscience became unbearable for her. In fact, she says this, he has the smell of blood still. All the perfumes in Arabia would not sweeten this little hand. She, and later she's, she's wringing her hands and she says, out, damn spot, out. She, she just can't clean her hands. She can't perfume her hands to get rid of the blood of King Duncan. And so what God does is he gives this guilt offering, this sin offering to, to purify us and to deal with guilt. And so, uh, you know, the, the picture in these offerings is of Jesus and how Jesus deals with our guilt. But because the, 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 these were temporary solutions with these animals. Let, let's just go through the picture. Firstly, the animal had to be without defect. Jesus was without sin. The, the animal had to have its blood shed. Jesus had his blood shed. The animal, once it was sacrificed, the remnants, whether it was the ash or whether it was uh, parts, parts of the carcass, were thrown outside the camp. Jesus, his body, was taken outside the camp on Golgotha. Uh, they had the sins of the people impressed upon them. Jesus took your sin and pressed upon him. And in addition, the, the sacrifice was for all people, whether the very poor, the very poor, they couldn't even afford a pigeon, could take flour for a guilt offering, for a sin offering. Uh, if, if you had a little bit of money, you could take pigeons. Uh, or, you know, if you were more wealthy, uh, rams uh, or sheep or, 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 or cows. So uh, that's what these two chapters is about. But there's a curious thing I'd like us to end on here. It's, it's the fat and the innards. Why? Is the fat belonging to the Lord? Why are the innards belonging to the Lord? Well, I'm dressed here in my mother-in-law's cooking apron, and I've got hold of our George Foreman, which should be an accessory in every kitchen. I'm sure you'll agree. And I lay hold of all the meat in the fridge. Sue's told me I'm going to be quick with this devotion this morning. She doesn't want this meat uh, defrosting. But I found myself some some steak here. Now, when we uh, put on our, our gloves and we, we fire up this George Foreman, we know what's going to happen here, don't we? The fat is going to spill out into the front end. Boy, does it smell good. Uh, when, when you cook meat, uh, let's look at bacon in the mornings, for example. When the fat comes off the bacon, what does smell? So we're going to ask ourselves, why does the fat belong? to the Lord. Well, in Psalm 66, 15, it says that the fat in these sacrifices, now quite clearly they weren't pigs as bacon, really, weren't they? But the fat that goes towards heaven is a sweet aroma toward God. So part of the understanding of the fat belonging to the Lord is that gave the sweet aroma. But in fact, the entire sacrifice was sweet to the Lord because it was an acknowledgement of people that they needed to be purified. Uh, the blood and the innards um, were part of the animal that the priests didn't eat. So part of the reason that the sacrifices were taking place is, is to feed the priests, but also to act as a sacrifice. So the bits that the priests weren't going to eat, the innards and the blood, was that belonging to the Lord. So it's another reason that the, he took the stuff that the priests weren't going to eat. But... I think another interesting reason is that in ancient cultures, um, organs were seen to be where the character was, where the personality of the person was. Now, the fat was around the organs, and so these organs are described in these sacrifices. And so to ancient people, it would be God saying to them that uh, your heart, your, or your organs, your, where your personality is, 
is, is all uh, being taken care of by the Lord. Uh, but I think it's probably less complicated than that when we understand that the fat is the richest, the fat is the best part of the sacrifice. And that's what's given to the Lord. The, the Lord always is looking for our best. I trust as you meditate through these scriptures, you will get an appreciation of what your best is and what you should bring as an offering before the Lord.